the uh, first session from uh, unnati uh, the new initiative from uvc graduates association the the whole purpose behind this initiative is to uh, create some awareness uh, help uh, connecting people who are interested about uh, higher studies uh, it might be abroad it might be like say in india it might be from any uh, bands related uh, uh, streams but we wanted to start off somewhere uh, because there was a huge uh, uh, ask from lot of people about this there were queries and etc so what we decided was we made an announcement during sammelana that is the engineers day event from uvc graduates association that this new initiative will be started so with this uh, like say the idea is to not only connect people uh, who are already studying or who have just completed their um, higher studies but also to kind of guide the uh, students or recent graduate who are like say aspiring uh, to uh, pursue their higher education so in this regard what we did was uh, the first uh, session that is today uh, we got more than 115 uh, registrations roughly so i am like say uh, very happy about it that so many people are interested so we had like say two speakers uh, for the first session uh, today uh, chitra uh, is from 2016 batch and she completed her masters from university of connecticut school of business and uh, we have kaushik who is from 2019 batch and he is pursuing his uh, masters from university of southern california so what i will do is i will not like say take more time in uh, introducing them because the format is going to be like this i just wanted to like say give a heads up about the format of the event so the generally what we have thought so far is the initial 15 to 20 minutes what we want to do is give both of them the uh, like say opportunity to introduce themselves and share their experience whatever they want to share with you that is the first uh, 20 minutes to 25 minutes of the plan then the remaining 30 minutes will be for the q and a kind of a thing out of which initially i will take maybe a couple of uh, questions because there were questions that were that has come in the uh, registration form which are more or less overlapping and similar kind of questions i club them together i'll ask them uh, to answer those uh, then uh, it will be open for any questions from the audience so that is how is the format so please uh, wait for your turn to ask any questions uh, till the end and if any of the questions are not answered also we will be letting you know how you can reach out and uh, like say ask further queries and etc so today the first session is basically both are like say studying in the us so that will be the focus for today's uh, discussion it might be different streams of course i understand but the focus is like say the higher education in us uh, for today's uh, topic okay so with this what i would like to do is i'll ask a request uh, chitra uh, to go ahead first and uh, yeah uh, chitra please introduce and you can start off um sure thanks so much Anna. uh so uh, good evening everyone uh, and thanks to satish Anna and ucga for um you know organizing this and uh, uh I can only see the benefits of this kind of session or initiative going a very long way. Uh, uh, considering when I joined, uh, when I was looking for resources like this, this would have been really helpful. So uh, let me uh, just like go a little more deeper and just introduce myself. Uh, Satishan has already done the brief introduction. So I'm Chitra. I graduated from 2016 EC batch. And uh, after that, I worked for about uh, two years in India um, in as a data analyst in uh, with a company called Tata IQ after graduating from UC. Then I wanted to pursue my master's. Uh, so I applied for a couple of universities here and um, I got into a university called University of Connecticut um, uh, for uh, in the School of Business for uh, my master's in business analytics and project management. And in 2018, I came here to do my master's and uh, I graduated uh, in December 2019. And from 2020, I've been working as a senior data analyst with a company called Tiger Analytics. 
Uh, so yeah, I've been, uh, after graduating from UEC, I've been very focused in the data analytics field and I've been working ever since that and uh, pursued my master's in that as well. So that's the introduction about me. Uh, and I, uh, the rest of the thing will be keeping it later, right? Or uh, uh, maybe a little bit more on the college and stuff for a couple of minutes more, that will help. Okay, sure. I continue that answer. Uh, so I think um, uh, let me tell about um, uh, maybe the broader process as well and how I came about for uh, selecting the college that I did. Um, I think one of the main things I would say um, any day uh, when students have to think about higher education in US and um, or anywhere abroad uh, is that a lot of times it's very important to do research and so that was my first step to uh, you know to take when i wanted to pursue my masters and uh, like i said i came in 2018 to us to do my masters uh, so the research did not start in 2018 it was way before uh, as soon as i pretty much joined uh, a, you know my first job i had in my uh, you know mind that i wanted to do my masters so um, maybe with the timeline it was a little different but um since then i had been doing my research so as i started working i got an understanding that okay uh, analytics was the field that i wanted to continue in um more and more and um, i realized that apart from our bachelors whatever in engineering we learn the skill sets are slightly more different that which is why it motivated me to do my masters um in that same field itself with the data sets so since I was pretty much sure about it, I started doing my research into universities and um, uh, not that I had in my mind saying that, okay, US is going to be the place because definitely that's more of the um, you know tendency for a lot of folks now um, that okay, US is considered superior or so on. That never is the case. It always depends upon your topic or subject. So I looked up or spoke to a lot of seniors um, already, at, especially our UEC seniors or maybe some other uh, you know friends and seniors I have here. I spoke to all of them, try to understand how for my subject, my interest, the field and scope is here in us and i tried to do my research with canada europe and so on and finally uh seeing that us was the better choice and um i uh that, that after i narrowed down that i looked up a lot of universities and uh thoroughly went through whatever i wanted to uh pursue in that again because the fields that we are interested are always bigger right it is uh, after that you you want to do your masters always in a very specific field so that was another part to understand because every university offers it very differently so i i had shortlisted a few universities lay uh, about uh, five to eight universities, uh, which were very relevant for what I wanted to do my master's in. And then uh, the most important step was to understand what requirements are there for their application process and everything, which is like taking exams like GRE or um, TOEFL, and then uh, what are the uh, documents you need from your end and all of that. So once I understood that, I started preparing that. That's when your timeline gets set in. So um, yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, I can go a little more deep dive into all of this, uh, either, either through questions or a little later on. But um, I, from whatever constraints I had or um, whatever perspective I had, which was could be finances, could be uh, the job opportunities and um, the field I was focusing in and everything. Uh, it seemed like uh, the course I took from University of Connecticut that was in business analytics and project management seemed the best option, uh, which is uh, why I chose that university. Uh, like I said, I applied exactly to five universities, and then out of which I did get uh, acceptance from three uh, others. So one was the university I joined and three others, and then one university I got a reject. So uh, out of the four universities, I chose this one to be the better one based again, like I said, the constraints I had, and I went in for uh, my uh, course. 
and my course was for about uh, uh, duration of about one and a half year. I completed it in one and a half year. And most courses differ in durations again. Um, you can take two years, you can complete in one year, two months, anything. So each of the courses will have like a maximum duration you can go up to and almost like a minimum duration or requirement that you need to complete. So you can always space yourself out and, uh, you know, complete the course within whatever time you have. Uh, if you feel like you want to go in depth more, take more time, if you want to finish it sooner, you can do it sooner. So uh, I completed mine in one and a half year, and then I wanted to make, uh, get more of a exposure to the industry here and uh, work here as well, which is why after I graduated, I applied for jobs here and uh, I got into a company, like I said, as, seen, as data analyst and now senior data analyst with uh, Tiger Analytics. So, I think before I pass on the button to Kaushik and he gets started, uh, uh, whether I get to cover this part or not later on in the questions, one thing I'll tell you is that um, a lot of times people undermine the fact that, you know, uh, there's a lot of research that goes into doing your uh, master's. It's not about doing the master's itself, but it's a lot of the work that comes around it. And two main keywords would be research and network. You need to research a lot about making the decisions for this because it's definitely a very different sort of a journey and network because you'll definitely need a good network could be you know your alumni like this uac alumni community or it could be your friends your colleagues uh, uh you know you work with or anything it's very important to maintain that network within you know uh whoever are abroad because that's what will help you in the long run so these are some things I realized through the process, but this is something that you should keep in mind before you start the process, at least from my end, as you can see. So yeah, that was what I had. Um, and I can thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Chitra. Uh, so uh, Kaushik, uh, you can go next, please. Yeah, thanks, Satishana. And, uh, and thanks Itra, for passing by the mic so uh, uh hi everyone uh, good evening i'm kaushik so i'm not so sure uh, if uh, most probably my juniors have uh, graduated so i'm a 2019 graduate so uh yeah uh, so i am currently at usc uh doing my master's in computer science uh so prior to that i worked at uh, micro focus uh, that was my uh, so that is where i got placed uh, from uvc and uh, i worked there as for 3 years 3.5 years if you include internship uh, so uh, i was uh, like from a software engineer i went to a senior software engineer and uh, from there i come, i came for my masters uh, just like how chitra mentioned uh, uh, the process is not small. <laughs> the application process is definitely not small. I like, uh, moreover, I had the COVID era as well. So I had to, I delayed my application by one year. Um, but uh, at least you should start planning a year or more early before for masters. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now I am work, uh, so I'm working as a research assistant at uh, USC. Uh, so I work on uh, basically uh, finding patterns. Uh, so it's related to health. So uh, basically you can, you are supposed to find the uh, patterns in the sleep and uh, um, their, uh, all their behaviors and all those things, uh, which is related to how the diseases like uh, the deadly diseases like Alzheimer and others, how are they related? So I'm into that research right now. Um, so I, I, Overall, uh, as uh, masters, when masters is considered, I would say it doesn't matter. So it depends on usually it depends on the uh, subject which you are looking at. So if you're looking for computer science, uh, Canada, uh, US, and uh, even Europe. So these are the different options available. Uh, in India also, there are definitely, uh, definitely a lot of opportunities. Uh, especially for uh, like if you're going for an MBA, MBA, then there is an option of IAM always, always. And uh, other than that, there are multiple schools in uh, India as well. But one thing which I noticed, uh, so I'll uh, speak about my own personal experience. So one thing which I noticed is, uh, they, so I have, I'm doing my master's here, right? So the education system is 
kind of different you know if you come to my, if you come for the education like if you come to us you will get to know us or canada or wherever it may be uh, so it's not, it's more of practical oriented people say the word practical oriented but uh, you won't feel it until you do it i would say um, but uh, i can give an example also so to make uh, the word clear um, the practical oriented word clear so i so in my exams we have questions like it's just like a competitive coding so basically you would be given a problem you are not you can take any books you can take any uh, anything other than in some exams let you take digital devices some don't but textbooks books notes old question papers whatever you want you can take you are supposed to you will be given a random uh, question so you are supposed to understand and give a solution in over there it's not about uh, by hearting and going and giving uh, exams so the education in that uh, education is of that format here so i am like um, thanks uh, sadishana for giving this giving me this opportunity uh, this uh, i strongly felt this was one of the most necessary things uh, uvc has a huge alumni network and uh, uh if uh, say we are supposed to use it uh back in so like if seniors are not there to support the juniors then it's not the thing of uvc so from the day one that is this uh always um, that's the concept which uvc always follows the seniors are usually there to uh, support juniors so i'm very happy about this and uh, I, I strongly feel that this will help students be like it would give them guidance in advance so that they can start planning there are people who plan uh, probably in the second year or first year of engineering itself that they want to go for masters or mba or whatever it may be so uh, yeah so other than that uh, yeah i think so chitra covered majority part of it um, yeah uh, in case uh, you want to want me to cover anything else satishana please let me know uh, uh, maybe a little bit on the like say like say how did you select and uh, the exams and that one a little bit before i jump into yeah. the questions sure 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 so yeah uh, mine as i told you guys that uh, it's a long process it's not a short process for sure uh, i had to write gre tofl uh, you know, so if you're going for canada i have done a lot of research so i would love to share the information so that it would be easier for you guys so uh, if you're going for canada uh, you don't usually have to take gre other if you if you're not targeting the top two two universities so if, without gre also it works with gre also it works and uh, usually universities at canada and uh, europe usually expect you to write ielts rather than toefl us universities accept both so you can you are before writing choosing the exams to write you are supposed to research about it and know which universities accept what so uh, ielts is the english exam or the toefl is also the english exam gr is the math and the english exam so uh, if you are going for mba then you are supposed to write gmat um, so basically they are all aptitude exams it usually takes uh, so for gre knowing 10th basics is more than sufficient it's more about uh, what i would say is given the problem how uh, like how quickly can you come up with the solution so that is the that is the whole agenda in the exam rather than knowing the formulas and applying the formulas is not the point so given a problem you should quickly find out the easiest way to solve it that is the that is the agenda of such exams so doesn't matter what score you get uh, i i am i'm a strong believer that GRE score is not the one which actually decides. In the past, people used to say, and even some people say that oh, GRE score is important, and that's it. That's not it. So that's just a, one of the parameters. The most important parameter is a statement of purpose, SOP letter, and the letter of recommendation. So uh, because if you are planning for a good university, if you are planning for something big, that is the one thing which defines you from someone else. so you should focus on that a lot i would strongly stress on the word a lot you are supposed to research about the university the professor and the course work and how you you should first uh, understand yourself you should understand how you have been what's your goal how you are connected to the goal how masters will help you go into that goal and the how why that university 
uh, all those things and what happens uh, you are also supposed to mention what happens if you don't get that you know, if you don't get the masters at all what what so what will you so what will happen so such kind of things if you focus on and if you write it on the say, statement of purpose like after proper research and with uh, good english and uh, obviously also all those things are important you should focus on a one area which you want to and that is the area which you should focus on uh yeah, so the statement of purpose is very important. Uh, that is the deciding factor is what I would say. GR is just a um, additional parameter, but uh, and other than that, uh, letter of recommendation, getting from professors or office, which wherever you are. Uh, I would strongly suggest uh, if you're going for uh, masters, having the uh, professors giving a letter of recommendation has more value. So if, uh, if we are asked to be having two from professors is always good. The reason being they would be able to validate your education perspective rather than your working perspective um so and moreover professors would usually have phds and all those things so they are more reputed they are more trustful so uh, a person reading a person who is thousand miles or ten thousand miles away who wherever it may be if they're reading your profile in a single sheet of paper they should if if someone from the so if someone who is who has a phd is certifying that you're good that means that yeah they are not lying so that is the reason having from professors is always good and uh, so application process as such you are supposed to do this then apply i would strongly suggest people to apply early usually the early bird uh, early bird gets the food or something whatever it may be <laughs> so uh, early, applying early is one of the key parameters which people usually tend to forget and uh, i uh, you guys are my junior so i'm definitely supposed to let you know and i want you guys to come uh, to wherever it may be canada us germany uh, europe or wherever it may be so it depends on subjects so uh, come for computer science people pro usually prefer us or canada uh, for uh, mechanical people choose germany and uh, other european countries and uh, yeah and so on so it doesn't matter uh, it based on it's usually based on subject and when coming to applying or uh, apply early that's one definite strong tip which i would give and other than that uh, yeah uh, apply uh, when you apply apply all those things and uh, with the scores and stuff and you'll have to wait for at least six months to get uh, five uh, five to six months to uh, get the results if you're like if you're like always apply for some safe universities some moderate universities and some hard universities so that you would have a combination of all those things you should know uh, what is your upper limit and what is your lower limit as well. Um, and yeah, I had applied for multiple universities among which I got admitted in USC, University of Southern California, uh, New York University, and uh, also Arizona State Universities. And uh, yeah, uh, that is the uh, application part of it. And you, know, you have to go through visa process and all those things later. All those things, once you are done with this, uh, you'll automatically start learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Pashik. So, uh, what we'll do is just, uh, like, say, I'll take a minute in between, uh, like, say, for, like, say, Chitra and Kaushik, whatever they have told. Uh, before I jump into the questions, I have, like, say, I think three or four questions with me, which were more or less very similar to the questions that were asked from, uh, like, say, a lot of people. I just wanted to give a, a little bit of insight, a little bit again, once again, to people who joined a little bit late. So, um, see, uh, basically, what at least I would want to uh, say uh, from my side is when we kind of started this Unnati uh, initiative, right? The idea is to make sure that, the, as Kaushik was saying a little bit earlier, to connect the uh, students or the recent alumni who have passed out with the people who have already gone through the process. Okay, that is definitely the idea. We want to, like, say, strengthen the alumni network. Giving back to the college doesn't only mean, like, say, okay, going to the college, uh, helping in the infrastructure or setting up. It's also about the alumni at the end of the day. So uh, today, UEC Graduates Association has around 1,100 plus members. Of course, this is not a uh, like say plugin that I'm doing in between, or I'm not like say marketing, but this is the fact at the end of the day, which I wanted to convey it to everyone. Be it the students, be it the alumni. Only with when alumni join hands, something like this can happen. Okay, so uh, more more and more alumni would 
come forward to help the students and connect and build the community see that is what is the most important factor we are all focusing on in uvc graduates association okay so the first session from munnati today is again i'm repeating it's majorly focused on the us uh, higher uh, studies opportunities the plan next going forward we want to have like say one session per month and going forward we want to do one session majorly um, like say in the opportunities in india say maybe uh, iim iits uh, etc etc okay so that is one uh, topic that we are thinking of and one definitely we are also looking at something uh, like say in germany for or outside germany like say we have couple of the alumni who have already volunteered who are told that they will be sharing their experience um one is in i think in netherlands and one is in germany for the mechanical folks okay so we will make sure that we will have a variety of topics and it will not be uh, restricted to just one stream or one line of thought process so that is how this entire uh, unnati uh, initiative will be shaped taking it forward we will love to like say hear from you what do you want how do you want to kind of make it a little bit uh, more flexible or more if you have any suggestions any innovative thoughts that okay why don't you try this out we'll be uh, more than happy to accommodate that i know there are some uh, like say recent alumni also in the participant group and if someone like say would want to like say share their experience and etc also in the coming uh, sessions right we have a simple form i'll be sharing it um, uh, in the i had already shared it in the email but i will also share it in the chat and if someone wants to like say um, volunteer in the for the coming uh, sessions uh, it will be a really a good thing uh, for us also okay so thanks uh, uh, everyone so what i will do now is open up for the questions so first thing uh, like say as i told i have some four uh, questions uh, as of now shortlisted from the entire uh, structure okay so it will be open for both uh, maybe first one or few can go and then the uh, next if you want to add on to anything if you feel most of the points are covered we can move on to the next question okay so the first one majorly is about the entrance exams uh, what kind of exams uh, uh, like say we we'll need to like say clear and how difficult was it for you to prepare and what was the timeline that you planned for Uh, like say preparation for the exams application process etc etc so if you can just give like say a couple of uh, your thoughts on this uh, then we can go ahead yeah chitra you can go maybe sure. uh yeah i can just go first but um, i think kaushik mentioned one part um, in his uh, uh, talk about the exams right so the main exams are uh, at least the universities you are basically ask for is uh two main proficiencies one is with your english proficiency which is covered by tofel or ielts uh, a lot of universities uh you are prefer i think tofel but again it may differ from uh university to university and the other being uh your gre score if you are applying for masters of science um and uh, gmat if you are applying for mba but again uh like i was saying earlier you will need to check with each university what the specifications are because their requirements may vary there is no standard across so you will want to know what their requirements are and plan accordingly with the broader list of universities that uh you know you uh, basically have one other thing um i wish i knew back then but a lot of times people miss out is also that some of the universities will be ready to waive the requirement for these exams like you might not have to give them a submit a gre score or not have to submit tofel score but that is based on few things of your profile let's say uh, based on your schooling or something with respect to your uh, you know bachelors or something again um it's like you know an asterisk mark you need to check on that but some universities will definitely be ready to waive that so if there is an opportunity with the universities you're interested to apply make sure you check on that but uh, on the broader uh, the exams the generic uh, part of it the information is like i said the TOF, i i took tofel and then uh, gre so uh, you need to plan well in advance now the timeline how it seems is uh i i'll go with my example personally 
I went for my, I mean, my master's started in 2018 of August. Now, if you backtrack that, uh, I got the acceptance from the college uh, in 2018 February, which is almost like six, seven months prior to before me starting there, six months at least. Now, before that is when you are going to submit your applications. That could be again, uh, three to six months would be the difference, right? So, like um, uh, how Kashik was mentioning. Now, before that, applying the putting the application is when you should have the score. So you should plot your timeline accordingly, uh, knowing because some you're going in fall, sometimes in spring, but you can give the exam irrespective, even if your timeline changes a bit, but just make sure you have enough time in advance. Now, for me, I almost gave uh, three months before I started my application process, I think I gave my GRE, which was sort of last minute for me. And uh, I, I gave two attempts for GRE. Uh, the first time I gave, I was not happy with the score and then I gave again. Uh, so with GRE exam, you can give multiple attempts. Uh, make sure that, so uh, with GRE, you'll have multiple sections, which you'll find uh, the information online. It will be, one, uh, like how your aptitude is, like you solve math questions and so on, uh, like how you would probably see in placements and so on, sort of that, but uh, good, tough, advanced level itself. So you work on that. And then there is um, an analytical question where you have to pretty much write like an essay. The format might have slightly changed since I've taken, I'm not sure. But uh, the format pretty much stays on this. With TOEFL, uh, which is the English exam, I took around the same time. Again, you'll have uh, with any English exam or with that uh, exam particular, you'll have uh, different components that they focus on with respect to your um, English proficiency, which is hearing, uh, list, uh, the talking, writing, and then uh, speaking. So on these four sections, they'll evaluate and there'll be a score that's given. So if I'm not wrong with TOEFL, out of 120 uh, score, you get whatever score. And with um, GRE, I think it's 330 or 350, I don't remember. 340, okay, yeah. So out of that score, you get so yeah, you get a score on it. And I think um, anything about 310 or 315, again, this is my references back when I did in 2018. It's almost four years now. But uh, anything about 310, 315 was a pretty good score. Um, uh, but again, check uh, research, research now and see what is a pretty good score. And as long as you're above the average level, that would be good. And uh, with GRE and TOEFL, like I said, you can take multiple attempts, but know that these exams don't come at a low cost. There is a cost involved with all of this and uh, a pretty huge one. I think with GRE, uh, uh, Kaushik, help me here. It's I think it was $10,000. $210, yeah. somewhere around yeah. 16,000, 16,000 16, 16, for GRE. Right, yeah. And I think something similar with TOEFL also, somewhere around, around 10,000. Uh, around 14,000, 14, 15, right. 14, 14, 14, 14, Yeah, the prices have uh, sort of changed, but, uh, you know, niche, I mean, keep a round figure like, you know, 17, 18,000 rupees for one exam. So it's not easy to just be like, oh, one exam is gone, I'll take another one. Unless there's a, a very much of a necessity for it, do not go for that. So. Um, again, this cost comes also plays a role, right? So make sure you keep that in your mind. Uh, you have sufficient days. So the process is you go to the GRE or the TOEFL websites, um, then you can apply and then you can set a date. So there'll be exam centers wherever local with Bangalore, any in a lot of cities, a lot of centers are there. You choose the center you want and then you pay for it and everything and choose the date as well that you want. And I, you can, I mean, it will be there on weekends as well, if in case you're working or something. So you take the exam and uh, then you get the score or whatever with the reports and they'll send a report and you can submit. The prep for these exams, uh, you'll find a lot of material online for it. As usual, there are a lot of um, websites which give you training where you take a subscription and you can specifically train for it. Again, that will be, um, I think, uh, uh, different for each individual 
some people go for coaching or some people take that subscription take that training some people do it on their own so both are possible you can do it on your own as well or you can take subscriptions and do but make sure you check out there and take mock tests that's very important take a lot of mock tests online before you take the actual exam because like i said it's a huge deal you're taking paying a lot of money and uh, it's important that you know where you stand before you are able to take things if you had anything to chat, I took a bit of time. No, Chitra, you explained it perfectly fine. Perfect, I would say. So you covered all the important points. Um, yeah, uh, one point I would like to add is always take GRE or TOEFL in advance, just like how she mentioned. Uh, in advance and so that you would have some time if you want to take, take a backup or if you want to take again you would have time each exam they will take around 15 to 24 21 days to report the score and send it to the university so you should not take it just before the deadline of the university so you don't miss deadlines uh, because that's important and uh, other than that uh, yeah so uh, how like uh, just like how she mentioned so in case you're coming for a fall batch then fall is the august batch so if you're coming for that then you should plan uh, usually the deadlines of universities are ranging from december to uh, december is the usual point uh, december mid is the usual point but some universities extend till uh, january even february as well uh, some very few extend it till march uh, so if you're lucky if you want to so you should research but just like what the important point she mentioned was i would like to stress on it that research research is the very important thing so you should research about the university very thoroughly before applying because you wouldn't know what the prerequisites are you wouldn't know what's the strength of the class you wouldn't know uh, like what uh, how competent are you in that university uh, is, does it fall into safe or does it fall into moderate or does it fall into ambitious university you should plan all those so research is important and taking in advance so if you are planning for august then uh, december is a midline uh, deadline so you should take the exam at least by august the previous year the previous year august you should at least take it so that you would have some time buffer time so you would uh, like in case you want to take again you would have uh, ideal time would be somewhere around may to june july of imagine you are coming for 2023's fall then you should apply for uh, like you should write the exam by 2022 may to june is july that is the usual ideal time to write and uh, for gre yeah, people prefer taking either TOEFL first or GRE, but that is the usual range. And uh, one point I would strongly uh, suggest, suggest for the exams is the English uh, English is not easy. It's not an Indian English which we uh, learn uh, in our uh, like uh, in our childhood or that's so it's a American English if you're taking GRE or uh, TOEFL. So you are you are supposed to read a lot of. Uh, international newspapers especially like all the us uh, newspapers read a lot of articles learn a lot of new words uh, reading comprehension is very important to get a good score in gre um, so you are supposed to focus a lot on that people who who are good in english uh, would not find that it would not find it that difficult but uh, yeah uh, other than that uh, so focus on that and you can yeah uh, you can do well you focus on that yeah uh, i just, just wanted to put sorry Anna. sorry, sorry. Just one point yeah go ahead. uh go ahead. uh is that uh which i forgot to mention is that the scores for gre and tofel right uh make sure you're do like i said the timeline is very important to plan because they again have a validity on the score. They are only valid for a particular amount of years. So you can't be like, oh, I'll take it today and then, you know, I'll use it later on, two years, three years. Um, I think the validity is somewhere till five years or three to five years. I'm not sure again, but it's only valid for some amount of time. So make sure your plan is in place and then take it accordingly because you don't want the uh, exam or score or result to become invalid. And there is a buffer time, I think, between taking two exams. So again, that also has to be kept in mind. Not like I took an exam, I got the score, or very next day I can book the next exam. I don't think that happens. So yeah, sorry, I just wanted to mention that. No problem. Sure, thanks. So uh, no, Kaushik, the the point that I wanted to mention that is something related to what the question is is when you mentioned about uh, shortlisting the uh, colleges to different categories, right? 
if you could just elaborate a little bit more on that people like say a lot of people are asked how to shortlist a university how do we choose on what fa- factors criteria yeah uh, so okay so i would like to mention that uh, so shortlisting so there are three types of uh, when you shortlist you are supposed to shortlist into three different ways okay one is easy university so you should see the um, just like how chaitra mentioned it's a, all about research so you should research of the past data you should research about all, what kind of profiles with what gr score what undergraduate aggregate uh, have tafil is just a uh, english requirement it is not a uh, deciding factor as such yeah a little it does but it's not the major especially for computer science it's more about a clearing parameter yeah it matters a little but uh, focus more on gre and undergraduate and sop so you should see the profile as such complete profile you should see the past profiles of seniors who are already in that university and see their profile and understand are you are you in the same range are you in the better range or are you in the below range so that uh, not just one uh, senior you should at least check for 10 15 20 seniors of that university so you will know uh, if you for if that profile uh, if that university comes in your easy range mid range or more uh, hard range so based on that you should start uh, differentiating the university so uh, you should apply at least for two two easy universities at least two so that you would Uh, get one like easy which you are you know very happy to go to it's not easy it's some random university don't apply apply to universities which you want to go to and they are comparatively easy the university and focus a lot on the moderate and the hard range uh, so moderate is the range which is ideal for you so you, it's like similar kind of your profile is already there so if if some senior of yours or some whoever it may be just use linkedin linkedin is a very important tool uh, other than that uh, there are different other websites where you can get a lot of past data um, like yocket and um, what uh, ym grad and a lot more so they all mention what what profile they had and what the score was and how they like did they get into the which university which they did not you should research about all those universities and then try to understand which university falls into what range split it accordingly some uh, prefer applying for four universities three universities five universities seven universities eight universities so you should you should it depends on the person and the, how many applications they want to apply and stuff so you should uh, characterize it accordingly so that you would know uh, like you would know your range if you you don't want to settle to a university which is like way been uh, like you could have got much better but you don't want to settle to a lower university at the same time you don't want to just apply for ambitious all big names and then end up getting no admits you would end up just waste wasting one year and uh, next year if you want you should try again so you should wait at least for six months again to apply and all this uh, depression uh, factors come in then so that's the reason you should apply in uh, such a way that you those are the university which you, which you want to go to among which there is a preference which one better which is better which is not and it uh, it need not be imagine my preference list would have some university at the top that doesn't mean that your university also should your list also should have that university at the top the reason being it's about priorities it is, so uh, some people people prefer brand some people prefer uh, don't bother much about the money some prefer okay money is a important factor for me some prefer okay research is important this subject in that university is better than this subject in this university so this is my preference so such kind of that is a, that is why i'm saying it's not about somebody else researching for you you sh- it's your own research which you should do, do so that you would know what is your priority based on that you should and also when shortlisting the universities you should focus on the cost involved the uh, like the location involved the subject uh, like how how good is that subject in that university uh, so uh, some random subject in a great university and some good subject a good university uh, sorry a medium university with a really good subject there is a huge difference and the ranking is another factor which you should consider all this you should consider then decide which is your priority among those factors you should shortlist universities in such a way that it matches all the character characteristics so it is all about preferences what i would strongly say okay okay yeah uh, thanks uh, so just before uh, we open up for any questions here uh, if anyone has any specific questions you can uh, ping me on the chat as well i'll, I'll open up for you also but just before uh, that 
uh, one question i have uh, like say to chitra maybe a little maybe you can take a couple of minutes about the sop uh, before like say moving on to the other questions for the day uh sure anna uh so i think kashik set a good precedent saying how um statement of purpose is the most important part of the application more than the scores itself and i think that's that's perfectly uh, i mean that was perfectly said because a lot of people tend to think when the application is being put you know scores are the important no they just one part of it which is telling you that you know hey this person has passed the standard but what more tells more about your profile is your sop so uh, sop or statement of purpose or whatever is called out uh, apart from scores you submit an sop and then you submit your lors which is the letter of recommendation uh, with sop uh, everybody has different ways of uh, approaching the sop um, again i might write it very formally some people quote experiences like they say hey uh, in my childhood i came across you know um, something like this which is what spiked my interest in this and uh, you know this particular sort of a field or anything and that's why i got it so people write it in very different ways so that is uh, there is no set rule for that you can write it however but um, like i think kashik had mentioned before the most important thing is you show um, showcase uh one how much you really are passionate about uh sort of uh pursuing that particular field or what your thoughts are about that subject itself like for example with uh when i was doing it for business analytics and especially the data science field i was talking about how much the data is growing and you know uh, uh what are the other aspects that i'm seeing and why is it that i want to do a master's because everyone's going to do a you know just do a degree for name sake but you should sort of show the reason you are trying to uh, do the masters which is the passion part basically and you know how you plan to use it so make sure you show that intent or that passion in the uh, you know statement of purpose also you highlight some of your um, about yourself as well some experience how you connected to the subject like i was writing about how i had just started my job and in the job how i realized some of the things and why i wanted to pursue that field so it's about connecting then taking different factors and connecting the sop with it your personal experiences or how the current uh, industry is or how you see it going or what you want to do with it in the future so things like this and the process is not like oh you're going to sit down and just write one copy you may go through 30 drafts or 30 different versions of it before you get your final sop and uh, people have a very wrong conception in your head that you'll write one sop and then you just copy paste it across universities and that's done no make sure you show a bit of customization or personalization when you're writing with certain university yes you can use the core of the sop to uh, you know across universities because that would not change but then also make sure there is a part of your sop that uh, connects to the university um, yeah i want to do business analytics but why at university of connecticut or what are the things that made motivated me to apply to that university is important it could be the professors it could be maybe there's already research going on at the university which you want to be a part of or uh, the kind of subject because the same data science uh, course exact name can be very different course uh, syllabus in one university versus another so you need to connect these factors which is why again research is important about the university you should know about it see who are the faculty what their interests are and everything connect these factors and i think at the most your sop should on a general basis be two pages or one page uh, i'm i'm not sure again it varies uh, with the different uh, colleges but i don't think beyond two it should go and make sure you get it reviewed by everyone you know you know your uh, seniors who are at the universities uh, people who are working get everyone's understanding but finally you make the decision but review it don't write one copy and submit and i've seen that and definitely take references from people but just to understand like a general structure and get an idea but you write the way you know the format you want um, i mean this is my thoughts at least uh, about that 
and uh, yeah so i think that's the more part of sop make sure your english is really good your grammar don't make those mistakes get that spell check grammar check uh, you know language check all of those do you don't have to use extremely fancy words uh, use good enough vocabulary but uh, you know uh, make sure it's not uh, you know really complicated we wrap up i wanted to make couple of uh, announcement again so uh, we have uh, any questions or anything feel free to uh, let us know uh, we will be noting it down and we'll try to answer it we wanted to time box it for an hour the session because more than that it will like say just spill over and everyone will not be able to kind of grasp it so one hour is what we want to fix it uh, fix the sessions to so that is first thing the second thing is as i told earlier i wanted to repeat it quickly saying going forward every month uh, we are thinking of one session if there is more ask and if there is more need from the students we will try to see if we can fit in two also but as of now the plan is one session per month and what we will be doing is trying to kind of cover various aspects as we did today from basically from us uh, perspective one from let's like, say india one from uh, germany for mechanical etc etc this is how we want to cover it so i just wanted to clarify that then the third point is definitely uh, request like say in the coming uh, sessions what we will be requesting is people to register and the uh, the registered people is what will be sending out the uh, link the meeting links okay the idea is like say not to kind of publicly uh, share the uh, zoom meeting links and etc but only to the registered uh, people is what we want to do because this was the first event we wanted to kind of keep it open for everyone so we shared it so otherwise my request is uh please do uh, register and tell your friends also you have attended today's session how like say what did you feel we will be sending out a feedback form also so we'll be more than happy to uh, listen to you and your suggestions thoughts and etc from like say the uec graduates association as such uh, i would like to uh, thank both uh, chitra and uh, kaushik for uh, like say making time i know it's a bit early for them Uh, they joined in and uh, like say sharing their uh, experience and thoughts with all of us uh, thank you uh, both of uh, you chitra and uh, kaushik and hope it was some uh, insight you got from today's session uh, what we will be doing as i told hearing to you listen to you there uh, there is also some more ideas that have been suggested to kind of help in connecting and asking questions and etc we will work on that we will definitely uh, make sure that there will be more interactions in the future uh, but hopefully this was a, a useful session so thanks everyone for joining uh, have a mm -hmm. good night uh, who are in india and like say to not only to both of you and anyone else who has joined have a good day